most talked about cash game in poker is back. At the Dust Till Dawn Casino, we'll be playing out 48 hours non-stop as some of the world's biggest names come to town for the big game. I'm planning on going home with everybody's money, including yours, so look out. I'm going to be on to you all night. Shut up. up! Being the only one that's ever played 48 hours straight, I know what it takes. Would you listen? Are you ever going to listen to anybody? In poker, anyone can beat anyone. The main thing is to bring a lot of cash. When you come to my game, bring a lot. A big bag. Why do you raise so big? So you fold. <laughs> that was a rare misstep for Miss Tilly. Oh, we do stop at Miss Tilly. I'm going to just make sure that they make mistakes against me like they always do. And that's how I'm going to take all their money. So you're looking for tells still? Give her the rest of the money. There's too many levels on this stupid game. <laughs> People are going to think else comes to breakfast, then. If they're going to eat with me, they better bring a long fork, because the devil's hungry, buddy. Can I get more money? You're so not D-list. I'm, <laughs> I'm C minus, perhaps. Trying to weasel you in, isn't it? If you tell me it's mine, I'm going to take it. <laughs> so brutal. Thank you. Stay in your seats, hang around tight, because I'm going to go out there and slay my opponents, and I want you to be watching me. Not only is there big money on the line, but we'll be seeing egos crushed and reputations trampled over as our players face eviction from the game. Win or lose, the players are never safe with the world's only poker eviction. I don't want to go. I'm like the worst at this. This is too stressful. Players can be evicted either by an online audience poll or via a vote off by the players at the table. Our players will be asked to write down the player they'd most like to see leave the game. And is it two ends or? and secretly show their nominations to the under the table cameras. Only the most active player at the table will be immune from eviction. Oh, it's so chill. Do I go four forwards? No. Welcome to the Party Poker Big Game 5. In seat number one, it's World Series of Poker bracelet holder, Jennifer Tilly. WSOP bracelet winner Jennifer Tilly sitting down with 10,000 pounds. She's hoping to better last year's result where she was the second biggest winner in the big game. In seat number two, it's high stakes cash game player Sam Trickett. Sitting down with 20,000 pounds is Sam Trickett, one of the most talked about poker right. players on How's the planet good. with over $3 million in tournament catches in 2011. Hey. In seat number three, it's Party Poker's online qualifier, Ryan Smith. Sitting down with 8,000 pounds is the first of our online Party Poker qualifiers, Canadian Ryan Smith. In seat number four, it's former World Series of Poker Europe main event champion, Annette Oberstad. Sitting down with 10,000 pounds, one of the most feared and accomplished female poker players in the world, Annette Oberstadt, who's the holder of a World Series of Poker Europe championship bracelet. In seat number five, it's former Irish Open champion, Neil Channing. A stalwart of the big game, it's Neil Channing. He played all Hello, but 10 minutes nice of last year's big game, and this year means to go the distance, by yes, it for 20,000 pounds. Hello, <laughs> In seat number six, it's high stakes cash game player, David Viffer Pete. The big game made him a household name. It's Viffer, who last season pocketed nearly 150,000 pounds profit. Tonight, he's back for more. In our next seat here, in seat number seven, it's Bruno Fatusi. First time in the big game for Frenchman Bruno Fatusi. He's known as a big cash game player in the Aviation Club and sits down tonight with 10,000 pounds. And in the final seat, it is the one, the only. It's Devilfish. The big game has been his personal nightmare. The Devilfish has never won here. Will this be the season he turns it around and doesn't leave empty-handed? <laughs> Let's do that again. <laughs> And then they got knocked out before the game started. <laughs> and there's your lineup. The there's now. the Devilfish. Always great for TV, great for the game. I'm thrilled to be joined to start out this cash game by Dusty Schmidt, author of a new book, Don't Listen to Phil Helmuth. Dusty, you're like a big game veteran now. Yeah, I played this, uh, this one last year, and I'm excited to 
commentate and play again this year. The stakes of this game are 25 and 50 pounds, and uh, maximum 20,000 pound buy-in to start. Trickett, Channing, and Viffer have all taken the 20,000 pound option. Everyone else has taken 10,000 pounds, with the exception of the online qualifier, Ryan Smith, who's in for 8,000, and he's gonna be special. Do you know the rules about this online qualifier, where they can only keep the money they win? Oh, okay. So, you know, after a certain amount of time, uh, after I think four hours or something like that, Ryan Smith is going to be, if he has 8,000 or less, is going to be, uh, have a lot of reasons to push his stack in. Yeah, that's going to add a pretty interesting dynamic because people know he's going to be pushing hard for pots because he's got nothing to lose and everything to gain at that point. So that could again add to the dynamic. You combine that with the Viffer factor and all the other interesting characters we've got here. This is going to be exciting. We are running with the big game. Very first hand, blinds are 25 and 50. And I think, <laughs> I think Viffer, obviously, he would have felt uh, grieved if he didn't play the first pot. Oh, he has to play the first pot. If you look at him right now, man, he already looks like he's been playing for 48 hours. He's got 48 to go. This is going to be interesting. It's funny you say that. I, from what I understand, he has already been up all night playing in another cash game in London. Here we are, of course, Dust Till Dawn Casino in Nottingham. This is a beautiful venue. Well, this flop is four ways. And it looks like Trickett in the big blind with the top pair. Yeah, Trickett's got the top pair. He's not going to be super confident about this, but it looks like he's going to kind of lead out here. And, uh, you know, at the same time, his hand isn't super strong. It is hard for people to have a good hand on that board. Devilfish on the button. He's got a pair of fives, and has he just flat called? You like this play by Devilfish? Yeah, I like this flat because he can represent so many things on the turn. I mean, a lot of cards can come off where he can uh, he can go ahead and rep uh, a number of different hands. And I mean, at this point, if Trickett bets, can he expect to get called by a hand that that, that he beats? Well, Trickett's an interesting spot because he's not quite sure if he's good or not, but he's and and that's it's going to be hard to sell that king as a real big scare card for uh, for Devilfish, but. So like he kind of knows he bets out and Devilfish can raise him almost all the time and he's in a tough spot. Yeah, exactly. He's gonna be in a tough spot. But at the same time, it also is gonna look a lot like something like ace four of clubs, ace five of clubs when he raises the, the king because it just doesn't look like the king's gonna hit him too often there. So if he's raising the turn, it's gonna look like a slow played hand or some type of big draw. 800 pounds bet and it gets through. Trickett, of course, playing the massive cash games in Macau online. And I don't know, he just has that aura about him that he just makes the right decisions all the time. It'd be interesting to see, obviously we're going to have eight of the online qualifiers all sitting down with 8,000 pounds over the course of this 48 hours. And it'll be interesting to see what kind of different strategies they approach. It's is there a book for how to, how to play a stack that's only good if you win money? I mean, well, yeah, I haven't really thought too much about the theory of like trying to play with this uh, this sort of situation that they have where they're only keeping the money that they win. But I'd imagine you're going to see him probably play pretty nitty in the beginning and then, like you said, get pretty loose at the end if need be. You're a little more interested in the strategy if, if you're sitting on his left, I imagine. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Which is, you know, fun. I mean, Dusty, of course, you, you've commentated for over 24 hours in the last big game, but I think you intend to do a little, you're a little more excited to play this time, which is going to be fun. Yeah, absolutely. I, I plan on spending some time in the booth here, but I'm definitely anxious to get playing. We have Viffer versus Trickett number one. I think Viffer raised that. Trickett called, and now it's gone check called by Viffer on the flop. Is that what, what you see? Check, I mean, it's a check. it's a weird line for Viffer to take here, isn't it? Uh, I'd imagine we're going to see a bet from uh, Trickett. I mean, would it just be very weak to check the turn here, if you're saying? I think so. I mean, at, at the same time, he's got to be thinking, you know, if Viffer has an ace, now Viffer's pretty happy about his kicker because, you know, he's got a clean kicker. So it doesn't look like a great spot, but sometimes you can do, you, you can take 
a bunch of different lines and you could do something like triple pot the river or something. We don't know what, what trick it has got up his sleeve to try and push him off the hand. But oh, he hit the flush. Out. But I mean, Tri Viffer had nothing, but he's played this hand exactly like he has ace rag, right? Yeah, exactly. If he has a hand like pocket tens, Trickett's not going to bet. If, if Trickett has a hand like pocket tens, he's not going to bet. So he thinks when he's betting that he's pretty polarized between having some type of nut type hand or just having air that's trying to blow off a weak ace. I think those those black chips, 500 pounds each, we're, we, we're just getting into the game. <laughs> but uh, that's an over bet, one and a half times the pot. Exactly. You like that. And now. that's exactly what I was talking about, that he might play a bluff that way as well, because Viffer's going to be thinking, man, you know, now this guy's double potting, and he knows Viffer can never be strong the way he's played his hand. The 6,000-pound bet, should he ignore it? Is he still... Does he still think he's good the same amount of times here? Well, now I actually think he probably thinks he's more likely to be good <laughs> because he's just got to be thinking what hand would ever make this large of a bet on the turn unless it was some weak hand trying to blow him off his weak ace. Right, you can't be, oh, he could, I see. It could be like a split pot that he's trying to blow him off of, perhaps? Not yeah, really. or just or just total air. You show me a bluff, the game will be real good. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with that. Too late. Well, he does manage to lay it down. We've had our first 6,000 pound bet of the night. And history brewing between Viffer and Trickett. Viffer's come to play. Last year there was a great cash game. I was very lucky to invite it. I had a great time. I had a lot of the highs and lows. I uh, was very lucky to win quite a bit of money. Some of my biggest wins in cash games have been, you know, quite a bit of money. I've won or lost houses or cars, you know, over five, six, seven hundred thousand in a day. I believe I bring a lot of fear to the table. I think a lot of players are scared of what I may or may not do because half the time I don't know what I'm going to do. And that's always scary. Last year I played the full 48 hours. This year I'm actually spotting them a day. Um, I played poker all night last night, so I haven't quite slept yet. But, uh, I think I can make it the whole 48 hours, and I actually, I guarantee to play the whole 48 hours if I don't get voted up. 48 hours with some of poker's biggest faces. We're back for more of the big game after the break. From the Dust Hill Dawn Casino, the Party Poker Big Game 5 is playing 48 hours continuously. The clock is ticking, the table is full of characters and loaded with money. Let's head back down to the action. So the cards are out. Viffer is the most active player now officially with himself and Trickett. Played every pop but one and this is Kind of a real hand here for cool. Viffer. Yeah, until he just chooses to call, I think in a lot of spots, Viffer's going to be opening so wide, and he's going to be peeling so wide out of position. And generally, you can exploit that. So I'd like to see people not just calling too often against Viffer. I like to see people three betting a little more, and I think that would actually put the heat on Viff for a little bit. And he's not going to feel a lot of heat if people are just calling. Right, then you're playing into his hands. Exactly. Because now he's just going to barrel, barrel, barrel on so many flops, and you're never going to get to showdown. But if you can take the initiative, three bet, now you can start to, you know, out Viff for Viff. <laughs> nice flops for both Tilly and Trickett. Straight draws. Obviously, Sam's is better. Um, he's not passing here. You like the raise? You like the call? You know, I think it's an option. I think you can play it either way, and I don't think there's necessarily a right or wrong. I, I tend to like to, it, it's just so it's just so opponent dependent, but a lot of times I like to raise just because you can rep so many things on the turn much easier. Not a great card for Tilly's hand. Diamond, of course, and that gives Trick at the back door draw for the flush. And I love when Jennifer just barrels in there. Yeah, and she's made kind of a small bet. And with the flush getting there and, and facing a small bet, I wouldn't be surprised if Trickett pops this turn. 
because you got to be thinking, why would Tilly bet so small if she had a flush on the turn? So a lot of times you can just go ahead and rep the diamonds yourself. Well, he's thinking the exact way you are. Yeah. And I think that is that is the one thing that, that we're going to start to see about Trickett that we didn't see last year that people have been wondering about. He's playing the margins in the game. He's getting the decisions right. I mean, this is just a perfect time to raise. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I think Tilly, really, the, the mistake she made in this hand was making such a small bet. If she goes ahead and makes a large bet on the turn, he can't really make that play with that kind of confidence. But when she leads out for something like that, it just looks like maybe like a weak jack or some weak draw that's trying to get cheap on the turn. Hold on a second. What is she doing? Wow. Is she capable of this? Is it a good play? Hello! Wow. <laughs> wow. I love you, Jennifer Tilly. Well, she's a lot smarter than me. She won up that uh, that whole little and, and logic. We she had, had this plan when she bet the 550. That's why she bet small. She's now making it look like she tried to induce a raise. Is he going to buy it? I think he is. It, I, I just don't think he's, he's going to put Jennifer Tilly on a hand like this this early in the in the stage. This is this is a highly sophisticated play, and you got to give Jennifer a lot of credit. This is this is something I didn't see out of her. I thought she made a bet that that made things a lot more transparent, and she was going to get exploited. But it looks like actually she was setting Sam up to make a highly sophisticated play, and I, I really like this play by Jennifer Tilly. How how polarized is her range right now? Is it is it kings and ace high flushes? I mean, is that what it is, or is it can it be? something a, a small flush I mean well yeah I mean Tilly is really repping like a like a nut type flush like an ace high or at least a king high flush because you wouldn't think in, in fact it's, it's pretty much only nuts because she wouldn't raise back typically with you know like a, a you know queen nine of diamonds or something like that the Tilly monster. Take a little bit of that, Mr. Sam Trickett. Jennifer Tilly's in the house. Should I call that? The first time I think that I played a cash game was um, right here, the big game, about four years ago. And I busted out of the World Series of Poker Europe. And I was kind of lonely and I didn't have anything to do. And I thought, I'm going to go down, down to the studio and play that ding darn cash game. I just had the best time. And I played and played and played and played. And I came out $6,000 ahead. And I thought, wow, this, this poker cash game, that's kind of fun. And then last year, I was the second biggest winner. Viv was the biggest. And I think I won 36,000 pounds or something. It's such a fantastic game. And what I like is it really emulates the way the poker games are. I mean, everybody has been in that game that's gone on for days and nights and days and nights. And you fall asleep. On on the floor and then you wake up and the game's still going on and you hop up with your pile of chips and get back in the game and um, then there's always like some diehards that want to play the entire time. I'm feeling really optimistic. I really don't like this Sam Trickett is on my left because you know he's a darn good player but when you look at the table there's no good place to sit. I mean I'm surrounded by sharks. The line for this cash game is nearly out the door of this Dust Till Dawn Casino in Nottingham. Uh, there's a, a bunch more of the online qualifiers who will be coming in, plus yourself, I mean, Luke Schwartz. There's just tons of cash game players up and down the up and down the road. They're all going to be getting a chance. The money will stay on the table, hopefully. Oh, it will. This is about, a, yeah, I mean, this is by far the most exciting 48 hours of the year for me. I mean, this is just, it's hard to go to sleep. I mean, you get this great cash game going, all these great players, big stakes, and just a fun environment. It's, this is just a great show. Yes, he gets greedy. He gets greedy. You get 100 for a good effort, though. Sam. He's giving you 100 for good effort. For giving yourself a negative free rule there. Yeah, yeah, I do that a lot. I'm yeah, that's a, that's a pretty bad I'm one. I'm down quite a lot on them. <laughs> you keep your mouth shut. How much is it? 150. 150. I don't usually, I don't make those bets that nobody can win. Like, I do them quite a lot. They're fun. Do you know if you ever win one, it feels like you're just... It's nice. You feel like huge like shot. You know who's the best? <laughs> The best at those? Trick is flat, flatted here. Bruno's raised with the jacks. No, That's kind of one of those spots where you're he hoping when it comes back game. around to Viffer that yeah, he yeah. does the re-raise. So yeah, exactly. No, he just loves, he just, you don't I mind Sam's call just, on, just flatting yeah. with the jacks every once in a while anyway? Yeah, it's fine. I mean, it just depends so much on the, the table dynamic and, you know, what he thinks of uh, certain players behind him. And there's just a number of factors that's going to get into that. Deepness of stacks. 
And that's the great thing about cash games, isn't it? I mean, it's never straightforward, really, like it is sometimes in a tournament and has how you should play a hand when you've made a mistake. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it, there's just so many different variations. There's so many things that go into each and every decision at the tables. It's just fun to watch, uh, watch these guys do their thing. Bruno's led at this. Trickett's called, 350 pounds. I'm under cover, I'm his bodyguard. Sorry? Yeah, and I like just I'm calling everybody Trickett. Needed one. Always oh. I mean, if you walk around in public like that, you need a bodyguard too. Were you over there? You came back to the Well, that's an action card. Okay. Yeah, why did Bruno, oh, I guess he really was going like for the check, check raise. It, it seemed like a Maybe great spot to bet, didn't it? Mean, yeah, yeah, the thing is, is Trickett's not gonna, like his hand looks so much like a, a smaller overpair, and he's just not gonna bet it that often. And even if you go for the check raise, he's not going to call it very often either. And so. the reason that Trickett, and it's a great check on the turn, but he's checking there for pot control? Or because he doesn't want to want to chase out the hands he's beating? Or what sort of? Yeah, I mean, Trickett, to be honest, I'm not exactly sure why he chose to, to check that turn. I would think he would start going for value at that point. Maybe thinking his opponent is on like sixes or fives or something. But, you know, maybe he, he saw something at the tables or maybe he's just trying to vary his play. Well, Bruno, 850 pounds on the river, knows he's best here. The problem with Trickett's, yeah. Trickett here is like, what could Fatusi lead with on the flop and then also want to bet the, the river with for value? You wouldn't think he'd bet a hand like fives or sixes or even sevens or eights, especially when the king uh, hits on the, the river. That might deter him a little bit from uh, making that type of value bet. How much, how much 850. Yeah. How much I play? Yeah. I started with 10. Okay. All in. All in. He's what did he say? Wow. All in. I wow. Call. Jack. I, what? What a play! He's. I think he just figures Fatusi can never really be like that strong. He was trying to take. Fatusi thought he might have a king often enough that he can get him to fold the king and. So Trickett did, did sense what I was saying. He did sense he was beat. He's not doing this for value. I think he's turning his hand into a bluff. He said he thought he had king queen, but Bruno has just doubled up. It was uh, all in by Trickett, but it was Bruno who was calling about an 8,000 pound raise there. And I don't hate Trickett's play. Trickett is here to play, he and it's not gonna. This is not gonna bother him a bit. You know what I mean? When he got confidence like he does in his game. Generally been doing quite well for the last year or two in cash games. I've won a lot of money in Macau um, when I went out there. Um, won some really big pots. And then the Aussie Millions um, was a really big month for me as well with the two tournaments, the first and the second. So won a lot of money in the last year or two. Everyone's buying in a little bit deeper than they did last year. So it's going to be a few 40k pots I feel in there. If people get a bit deeper, you can potentially win like 100 grand pots and they're always exciting. So. I think that I'm going to make this game a lot more exciting um, than your average person. I'm going to be playing a lot of pots and putting a lot of pressure on opponents, so uh, I'm really looking forward to it. Still very early, of course, but have a look at the stats. Great start for Bruno Fatusi, mostly at the expense of Sam Trickett, who stuck 7,000 pounds plus early on. Not much movement among the others, although Jennifer Tilly's been quite impressive. I think Sam Trickett's upset about being down, but topping up 10,000 pounds more, he intends to have the maximum at all times. We'll be back with more action from the Party Poker Big Game after the break. Welcome back to all the action from the Party Poker Big Game from the Dust Till Dawn Casino. Let's head back to the table as we continue this poker marathon. He's one of those guys, Devilfish, horrible record in the big game over the years. If there's ever a TV game that owes the Devilfish, it's definitely this big game. He's had a terrible luck in it. It's the likes of Helmuth and some others over the years. But... Uh, Overall, you know, he's a guy who fancies himself in big cash games and has done well over the years. Seat seven, folks. Seat eight, folks. Seat one, folks. 
It looks like Bruno's just gonna limp in with his deuces. Two, two races yeah, for three. Viffer opened this up for a limp, and now Trickett is uh, hot to trot, or that's what he looks like. Yeah, I mean, that's what he's trying to do. I mean, I honestly, well, it looks like... Uh, Check oh, out. Wow. Check out the guns on this kid. Wow. Internet he's come out of nowhere. Yeah. That's a good play. Like seven. It's a great play, right? Great play. Because is, Sam's going to be so wide in that fold. spot. And I actually don't mind really limping behind a lot in Sam's spot there. Because you open yourself up to this, and it, it just makes a lot life a lot more difficult. Whereas if you call, you're always going to see the flop. And then you can start repping things post-flop uh, if you'd like. Uh, so it doesn't mean you have to just take an overall passive line. But at least this way, you kind of always get that chance to see the flop and get a chance to flop the six. Although with deeper stacks, I guess he can't really, you know, count on Ryan Smith waking up with a hand or waking up with an idea that he has a hand. <laughs> so certainly when, when stacks are like 100 blinds deep, I much prefer a flat call uh, pre-flop by Trickett there. But when stacks are super deep, you can raise and then, and then call profitably usually. So, you know, his, his play is certainly fine. One thing I love about this Ryan Smith, nobody knows him, and obviously he knows that nobody knows him. And he's making a play that nobody would expect. I mean, if it comes an ace, a king, a queen, you know, he should win this all the time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it would be a crime if he didn't win this pot, especially since he flopped a flush draw to go with it. Twelve hundred. This is going to make Ryan Smith feel good. Hey, it was sad for you. I thought maybe you were going to go home. Yeah. Long sad trip back to Toronto. My first pot ever on a TV show. Congratulations. With the six highs, worth a little smile for this young Canadian. It was a big confrontation Yeah, it's a special here. moment. That's, uh, I, I thought that's poor good. Ryan was going to go back to Canada. That's what we like to see here. You, uh, you report, the qualifier TV showing show. the pros up. How yeah, about Chad trying to get the information? He's all pro say anything, Ryan. Let me tell you a tale. So we can remember it because it's a momentous occasion. Yeah. You know, we, part of Canada, in two years' time, I, I won't this. remember it unless I remember the hand. I was, I was not falling to a punch on that part. Uh, one thing. I was not. Three back kings at home. Dusty, about the online qualifiers this year, that in past years where they a lot of them came in on free roll tournaments, this year most of them have won their seats through uh, cash game leaderboards over the course of several weeks. And because of that, uh, I think a lot of these qualifiers are going to be guys who may be some of the best players in the game. Well, the best time. Yeah, that's that's a huge change from last year, and that's uh, yeah, the, these guys are all going to be tough. I mean, you know that yourself from playing so much online. Guys who who win those cash game leaderboards, they, they know how to play. Oh yeah, they, they know how to play. So uh, yeah, Ryan Smith is uh, is definitely going to have a, a good opportunity to make some money here. I met with the old Deuce Three on the button, and she's got Channing wow. in the small. Oh my gosh! Wow! Oh, really? Now we can see our action right here. Oh yeah, yeah. Especially with the flush draw on board, Channing is not going to be too quick to give her credit for a better hand. Uh, he, how can he? What are you going to call this? Um, He's going to be thinking only pocket fives and like ace five beat him pretty much. And, you know, and he's going to see all those draws. Now, yeah, and Annette has to raise right now. I mean, it's just because there's so many hands that Channing should, could be willing to, to get it in with. Sort of exactly. And, and, and from Channing's perspective, he's going to be thinking it. Annette could just be making a play. She could have a billion different draws. And he's not going to be thinking she has a better hand too often. We'll just see how much trouble he gets himself in here. It's amazing because <laughs> most players would have re-raised Channing. He's not the kind of guy who loves to get it in big the on the flop. But now, yes, actually, so see the stacks. The stacks were actually pretty good for Channing to go ahead and just get it in there. If they had been 20k deep, I might like a call a little more. But uh, I probably prefer just popping it back and getting it in. Is there any way Channing doesn't go broke here? And and that has to think about making sure she bets this heavy enough to to get this paid off big, right? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. She should be making pretty large bets because for Channing to call, 
you know, he could even be as strong as like Ace King now a lot when he calls the, the raise out of position and then the king turns. So uh, she's loving that card and actually Channing's loving that card because he's not putting her on an Ace King and he's still got her on a number of like six eight of spades and you know, three six of spades and random like jack ten of spades and maybe a, a bluff that decided a two barrel. Now that's unfortunately gonna kill a lot of the action. That's gonna save Channing a lot of money there. 4,200 pounds in this pot, and right, a big ray, a, a big part of Annette's range for from the way Channing perceives it is the spades. But still, still, you feel like he may just check and call here, or what's this? This is this is definitely a out here. I, it, it's it, he must be going for something real small. Two five threats, two thousand three hundred fifty. And somewhere, he made that decision quick, somewhere between a blocking bet and a, a value. I, I don't know. Would it, yeah, I'm not sure what he's going there for because if he was going to call some, if, if he was going to put more money in the pot, he probably should have been better off letting Annette maybe go for a triple barrel bluff, maybe try and pick off some six sevens or some three sixes, some of those busted straight draws that missed. He's got to put more money in. I mean, checking and folding was an option, too, for him. Look at the stacks, the profits. And Bruno, of course, 7,000 pounds ahead. Annette, who only started with 10,000 pounds, about three grand ahead right now. Channing stuck. Trickett buried. I think all the right people are losing, in a yeah. sense. I mean, nothing personal, but to get more money on the table, which is what we all want to see. Like but Annette on a roll. I nope, they don't do that anymore. And you she said she wanted to get off to a good start you, because she wasn't she wasn't <laughs> sure <laughs> if she had uh, funded herself well enough for this game. She, I think she thought it was going to be a little lower stake, and so she kind of said, you know, she wants to get off to a good start so she doesn't start like you had last year, I think. Yeah, exactly. Last year I I came in under roll, figuring it was twenty five fifty. Yeah, it was real fun I brought, for me too. you know, I brought like six hundred big blinds, and I thought, hey, that should be enough, but. 600 big blinds becomes like 100 or 200 big blinds in a hurry when you start straddling and double straddling and stuff. So this this game plays a lot bigger than advertised. A lot, lot bigger. I understand. You said 30, 40,000 pounds doesn't go very far in this game, or 50 or 100 thousand dollars, which is nice for the viewers. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, and I mean, spend it down man. Trickett has, I think this was a straddle from Trickett up to 100, Ryan Smith, the re-raise up to 300, and everyone else has followed along nicely. Well, this could get exciting here with Smith and Biffer. I mean, Biffer is just flopping hands. Right, and, and Smith has to go broke here, basically. Or at least get all the money in. With uh, with those stack sizes, yeah, it's going to be hard to get away from this. Yeah. A little surprised to see him. Uh, oh, he he did he did raise. I gotta, I'm sorry, I got to make it 15. Yeah. Sorry, I, he's made this a min raise. Looks like he didn't. He didn't stick in enough, but when you say looking at the stack sizes, Smith's on seven grand, so you're saying that's not enough for him to get away from this hand. There are right, and, and the pot's so large pre-flop that effectively the, the the stacks are even even a little shorter. I mean, he's basically, you know, his stack to pot ratio is 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 you know kind of dictates to where you should probably be getting in, especially against a guy like Biffer on a board like this uh, with jacks. If it helps you, I meant to make it 2100. Chris Sly is taking over to Chris Sly. I don't know what that means, but, but that is the truth. This is not like the old days when jacks are never good in this spot, or? Yeah, I mean, the old days, this was just a set every time. <laughs> you know, I mean, poker's changed so much. <laughs> I mean, you get raised on a flop like that, I mean, I just tossed aces as fast as possible, like in 2005. But not anymore. I'm actually pretty excited to get raised on that flop, uh, 2011. And it, he's done something unexpected. I, I, I kind of thought it was uh, just shoving most of the time. He's wow. actually called. Why, why has Ryan Smith done that? 
Well, I think he figures if he raises back, Viffer's just going to end up having to fold a lot of his five sixes and ace fives and ace threes and three fives and hands like that. So I think he'd probably rather give him a little rope, and he, he's probably never getting away from it. He's just giving him a chance to put more money in with those types of hands and, and then possibly get away if something real nasty like a, you know, if an, maybe if an eight or a five comes off, then he, he can't beat as many of those hands anymore. He, he was not looking happy there, Ryan Smith. I mean, this is a guy who's on, yeah. he's used to playing online. Right now, he looks like he looks like he got hit by a truck. He looks like... Well, a lot of it is a ghost. These guys, like, it, if this were his normal cash game, I don't even think he blinks and he probably check raises all in here. I got two outs. And TV's, TV's, uh, and it's just the jacks for Smith. Two jacks in the deck to get him out of this mess. Viffer with the full house. Brian Smith gonna be eliminated. That deuce would have been good on the turn. But not on the well, that's river. That's pretty sick right there. That's just a tough beat. I mean, there's really not, not much you can do about that. that. If that were a double fish, you know, maybe you could find a way to get away, but not against Smith. Nice Well, Ryan Smith, the young Canadian, I'll tell you, he's got his heart on his shield there. He didn't back off. The great play against Trickett, but the cooler against Viffer. This is where he's comfortable. Biggest stack on the table. Making the joint with the 7-4. This is Viffer Vifferland. 47 hours left to play in this poker marathon. Plenty more to come after the break for the Party Poker Big Game 5. Welcome back to the most talked about cash game in poker here at the Dust Hill Don Casino. We're playing out 48 hours non-stop with the world's biggest names in action. It's good to be Viffer so far. I mean, actually, he'd rather have these hands occur later in the session when he's built up his image a lot more and, and, and gotten in a lot more of these uh, big pots with, with people and maybe when people are a little more tilted and a little more tired and going broke easily because he's made a ton of monsters. And actually, he really hasn't made a lot of money considering how insanely hot he's run. I get a seat. No. That's a point that I'm sure someone like Channing will be quick to remind him about. Try and put the guy on tilt. But right now, Trickett's still 10,000 and Viffer's ahead 10,000. Those are the big numbers so far. Jennifer's, I believe, requested a seat change. They're not going to be allowed here, obviously, but I think, I think Jennifer wants one, not because of position, but I think it might have more to do with her eyesight and the, and the, the lights and things like that. If that knows that everybody wants a seat on his left. <laughs> Channing's opened this up with a mid-raise. Yeah, for those who didn't see last year's show, Viffer destroyed this game last year. What did he win? Something like 150, 160,000 pounds? Yes, 147 or something like that. Yeah, Australia's because... You know, we were playing like 20 people in. How much is it? This flop has been bet by Fatusi with bottom pair. Devilfish called. Now he's hit two pair, and Tilly's got the flush draw. Jennifer's showing some good judgment here, not getting too aggressive against a devil fish. Maybe she has cottoned on to the fact that he's got it quite often. Yeah, and you're enjoying it. Maybe. Well, good check by Devilfish. I took, did I take my punishment well last year? Yeah. He definitely you put her on the right hand because he's not too I happy had, about I just calling a half pot bet on the river. I had the second worst seat. I had the second worst I like seat. I like Tilly's bet size because this is the top end of Devilfish's range here. And the only person that has seen That's about the best shit hand that she could put him on. She probably thinks he's even weaker than that and she's just trying to get something. I can't imagine how I can fold this though. But if she has a problem seeing 
As long as we don't all start jockeying. Yeah. Busy. He's good enough to fold this, isn't he? <laughs> That'd be a hell of a lay down if he ends up making clean, it. Baby, I mean, uh, you have to on the flush, right? Don't well, show me a black cat when we need him. Maybe five. that's why he's the oh, devil fish. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> he's I'm, glad like I'm glad I'm not stuck and in this game. He showed it. So <laughs> is everyone saying to themselves, this guy's bluffable me. or this guy's good? Up? He's folding Well, if you're a tight player, <laughs> the last thing I want to do is show people that well, hand we'll do a call, huh? and show that of fold course. and just encourage what them to run me over even more. I don't know, but I just would have known I had two pair and it's Jennifer Tilly. Yeah. Jack do seven, I mean, what are you gonna put her on? I don't know. Put her on tilt when I beat her. I'll tell you, back in don't, don't the days when I mean, first started right watching the demolition, everyone did it. If I'm never, if I'm never I sure, if I'm never sure, I just There was a better hand there. reader in the game as far Sometimes as live poker went. Yeah. You know, yeah, he just, he's, yeah, yeah, I knew I was a lot of people say the game has moved on, but obviously he's still quite a good hand reader. I think people would say, it's a talent you shouldn't have anymore because you don't want to read hands just ranges. Is that what you would argue? Well, the thing is, is, is the game has sort of moved on a lot in shorter stack games, like 100, 150 big blind type games. But these really deep games, they don't play like they like the shorter stack games, like the 100 big blind games you'll see online. They, there's a lot less three betting, a lot more post flop play, a lot more value is placed on making these sick reads. Tilly's flopped well here, three sixes. Both Channing and Fatusi have two pair. And Bruno's let out at this for like a three quarter pot size bet. 350 pounds. Well, I'd expect Tilly to raise here because she can represent a lot of different types of hands. She can just rep like a type of hand where she's just saying, hey, I don't think you have a six, and she could be raising, or she could be raising seven, eight, or an or an over pair, all kinds of things. Jennifer Tilly's flat called here. I'll bet you one. We'll find out. We'll find out later. And it's going to be harder for her to make a lot of money here on the turn than it would have been on the flop. Yeah, I don't. I don't love the the flop uh, call. That's why I mean, it's certainly an option. But I, I, I think with with the flush draw on board and 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 just the fact that it, you know there isn't really much that she wants to be raising for value there. So Fatusi can put her on, put him on a draw and make a lot of hero yeah. calls. I feel bad. Uh, and, and, and maybe if the board breaks out until he gets paid. Yeah. And I don't even think she can value that this anymore. This, this should go check check for the office. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't imagine what hand she would think would look him up here. Yeah. <laughs> she kind of just thinks she's player. she's actually like beat most of the time here, I right? Need it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah, I, I'm I just hoping I, it goes check, check, <laughs> and I win. I'm definitely not thinking about putting value back out here. That's a little thin. Because so many of his hands could be like leading out with seven, eight, well, and then he's just going to check call when the flush makes there with uh, with just his straight. I think this is a pretty optimistic value, but but it turns out, I mean, Thanks, obviously buddy. she's looking re really smart right now because right. she does have the best hand. Who's, who's sicker? Tilly for making this value better. Fatusi, now we're thinking about calling it. Yeah. Have ever seen me win? Because <laughs> Bruno's yeah, probably like saying that. the same thing you were saying, right? She, yeah. What did she have here? Yeah, exactly. I mean, she's either hit her hand or she's still bluffing. Yeah, and it's real hard for her to be bluffing because she flat called on the flop, so. You wouldn't think she's going to so. turn like some seven. hand like pocket tens into a bluff or something like that. So like Omaha and you we'll pretty much think she just like, has something big like a full house or flush or straight. Omaha's at my absolutely. No, it was old. It was old. Oh yeah, but you guys are playing half and half or something. It's time to welcome our second party poker online qualifier, Andre Pedersen. <laughs> Sweden. I'm Jennifer, how are you? Oh, I like Hello. a little bit of that. Another a crazy Swede, an online qualifier, Andre Peterson. And uh, he'll be in with 8,000 pounds. Are you qualified to win a C2? Jose, are you a qualifier too? Yeah, yeah, I'm in. <laughs> He's in 
seat number one here. Jennifer Tilly's moved over. Oh, the sharks from online. Oh, we have a big smile on his face. Don't worry about that. Don't give me too long. That's before the water gets filtered. Should I show the cards like you do? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mainly when it's not the action on you to show that. They want them to be on the on the glass. Are you straddling? When it's your turn. I am. Is it every no, night? it's not compulsory. I, no. I'm just a degenerate. Straddles have now become typical. It's 100 face. And, uh, yeah, the chips are a little funny. They're not mandatory. Andre Peterson is asking if it's a mandatory straddle. No, but it is becoming quite yeah. the thing to do. How do you like this? How do you like this? He's walked into the ladies. You play a lot online? What stakes do you play? Yeah. He is still looking for the button. 200 the face button. 20. <laughs> 200 for No, no, no. Nah, no, no, not that one. Well, the interrogation has started. They're trying to get a feeling for who this guy is. Because too big a coincidence to think he walked into a big hand. 5, 10, 10, 20. And yet, like, at the same time, you'd think nine times out of Shoot ten players would come in and just play tight. Devilfish and Channing playing the sheriff here. What a flop. And the Devilfish could very easily get himself in trouble. He's got the nut flush draw, a wheel Six draw, hundred. and Pedersen has only walked into three queens. Don't be the quickest qualifier. Dusty, the massive qualifying. pot. Pedersen's yeah. Yeah. sat down, walked into the ladies, yeah, and now flopped the set. Devilfish with the nut flush wow. draw. How do you like this for a start? Yeah, with a gutter ball to the, the straight, too. This, that's basically the dream flop for both these guys. <laughs> All right, at least he doesn't bet like 825. <laughs> so this is good. I don't know. I mean, okay, I'm all in, I guess. Yeah, yeah. And the Devilfish just going to get on. it all in, and Pedersen's going to call. And this is just worlds collide. Oh. Yeah, oh. this is the cards colliding right here. We'll just see who gets lucky. Yeah, yeah. That's the final one. Wow. Oh. <laughs> Oh. I knew you died. He's either, this is either going to be the one yeah, quickest the exit in the history of the big game yeah. or the quickest yeah. double up. Wow, what a way. <laughs> Welcome to the big game, huh? Oh, yeah. All in. Devilfish, you can see, he's, he's 33 percent, which is not bad considering what he's up against. Yeah, it's the worst hand he can be up against. He still has 33 percent. Wow. Has the Devilfish, has his, has his luck changed in the big game? Right. It wow. has. Wow. wow. Poor Pedersen. Yeah, that, it truly is poor Pedersen. That's, that's really, really tough for us. Poor guy. He's flown all the way here. He's, uh, he's played the Queens aggressively. Two dunks called him. Big raise pre-flop. Flop the nuts. That is really, really sick. Biggest winners so far, all of whom are still at the table. Last season's big winner, Viffer, off to a flyer. And the Devilfish historically hasn't done well here, but making things right so far. Bruno Fatusi, Jennifer Tilly, both starting well. On the other end of the coin, Smith and Pedersen, both busto for 8,000 pounds. Sam Trickett, Neil Channing, finding the going rough early. And Annette Oberstadt down all about a munch again. Join us next time as the clock ticks on until we reach 48 hours at the Big Game 5. So you're looking for tells still? Give her the rest of the money. There's too many levels on this stupid game. <laughs> you call this bed. What happened if I call this bed? I'm in the taxi. I can tell you the player that is being evicted from the table right now is...